Are you ready, Monarch fans? It's time for the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Rader and Coach Bobby Wilder. Sponsored by a Step in Time Chimney. On the road again, in the ACC again, on national TV again. This time, though, against the 21st ranked team in the nation. Another chance to pull off a shocking college football upset. What happened in Charlottesville last week and what's ahead when East Carolina comes calling on Saturday? Let's find out. The Old Dominion Football Show starts now. Hi, everybody. I'm Bruce Rainer along with Coach Bobby Wilder. Coach, you were 28-point underdogs at UVA. You lost by only 11, mm -hmm. but we're shocking the college football world again. Yeah, I was really pleased, Bruce, with the start to this football game uh, to jump up 17 to nothing. The first 20 minutes of the game, we were clearly the best team on the field. And what I was most pleased with, Bruce, was it, it was all three phases. We take the opening kickoff, and we spent seven and a half minutes of the first quarter on offense, got the field goal, defense three and out, gets a sack on third down, and then we score again. So we'd run 18 plays to their three plays in the first quarter. That 17 nothing lead, the biggest issue we had, Bruce, was we, we misplaced a kickoff. They got a big return, but the start of this game shows the improvement we're making as a football team. Man, I'm telling you, and talk about improvement. You said this summer you really weren't sure exactly how good this team was going to be. Mm -hmm. So many transfers, including your quarterback, Stone Smart. Now right. everybody's taking notice. Yeah, and with the fact we had 46 new players, we had, we had 24 first-time players in the first game, 14 new starters, and some guys, Bruce, that have moved positions. Keon White, who's about to join us, went from offense to defense. Isaac Weaver went from tackle to center. You mentioned the quarterback, but what I really like about this team, Bruce, this is one of the hardest-working teams I've ever coached in 32 years. Every day they show up, they work, they want to get better, and those transfer players you mentioned are performing at a high level right now. Let's not bury the lead, Coach. Your defense was off the charts, but the nation got to meet one of college football's best-kept secrets, Keon White. He was double-teamed coming off the edge. Only his third game as a defensive player, he was the best player in Scott Stadium on Saturday night, in my opinion, and Keon is here. Man, you were on fire Saturday. What got you going? Uh, just the motivation to win, you know, uh, we go out every day to uh, go win the game and I just wanted to go win. Mm -hmm. Keon, you were the team's best tight end last year on offense. What's next year? You going to try to be the quarterback? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I joke with uh, coaches all the time about this is my uh, phase two of my three part plan to go both ways. So <laughs> right now, I'm in phase, phase one was play tight end, phase two was play defensive end, and then phase three next year is go both ways. Or maybe before the end of the year when we see sneaks in there at tight end, you know, when you're right there at the we, goal We do. Line. We have some packages where he's in at tight end also. We just haven't used them yet. All right, Keon, uh, you have to let uh, Coach Blackwell cut you loose, let you move around a little more because, man, I'll tell you what, you had a great game on Saturday night. What do you think about that maybe getting a little – yeah, um, a little looser. The, the bandit position is not solidified. We um, have some packages in where I move around and everything, go from end to uh, bandit, back and forth, uh, oaky, different fronts. We have mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a lot of different packages in. Blackwell definitely knows what he's doing. What do you think, Coach? Think mm -hmm. uh, maybe you have all different ways to use Keon now? Yeah, we will. And, and one of the things, Bruce, we're very aware of based on – his improvement. Let's keep in mind he's only played in this defense for three games and his first two were at end. So he, he understands the end position. He's still learning the bandit position. We've got, as Keon mentioned, there's some packages where uh, he could line up at linebacker. He could be in an interior D lineman. It'd all be based on matchup in the game to try to get him in the best situation to make plays. Wow. I'll tell you one thing. You were awesome on Saturday against Virginia. Coach, I know that how tough it is for a young program like yours to go mm -hmm. on the road, play ACC teams. Uh, that Virginia Tech upset really mm -hmm. gave you guys a lot of national exposure last year. Mm -hmm. Saturday night, uh, fourth and inches from your own 29. Instead of punting, mm -hmm. you decide to go for it. Explain mm -hmm. to your fans what was going through your mind and mm -hmm. why you made that decision. Well, the number one reason is I explained to the players and the coaches going into it. When you're a huge underdog going on the road, we're going to win. And an example of this, Bruce, in the first half, we were fourth and one in our own end. 
in the second quarter, up 10 to nothing. We run the ball, get the first down. Three plays later, we hit Matt Geiger for a 47-yard touchdown. So that mentality, all of our team was, was behind to play to win the football game. And I really like the play call Coach Scott had on the play. If we didn't, one of our offensive linemen slipped on the play on a block, or we're going to get the first down. So we'll always have that mentality when we're a huge underdog under the road. Because as you know, we're, we're going to keep playing the ACC. We play them three times next year. And when you're sitting in the stands, when you're sitting at home watching on TV, mm -hmm. you don't understand where the players are, how tired they are, right. how you feel the other team is progressing, and all of that comes mm -hmm. into play in the mm -hmm. seconds you have before you make a call like that. Yeah, and we've been successful on the first two fourth down plays in that game, but we don't beat Virginia Tech last year if we're not aggressive on fourth down. This year, the Virginia Tech game, we converted on fourth down in our own end to give ourselves a chance to win in the fourth quarter. So when you're playing those games, games, sometimes you've got to call it like that. Now we come home and play East Carolina, a game that's a little bit more evenly matched. Probably not those same scenarios. All right. Let me get back to Keon. As Coach just said, East Carolina comes calling on Saturday. Should be a sold-out crowd at Ballard Stadium. You guys still fired up after that Virginia game? No chance of a letdown? Definitely. We're even more fired up, actually. We're eager to win. We um, lost two back-to-back, -back and we're just trying to go home and get a win for our fans. All right. Well, hopefully we'll see you out there uh, getting as many tackles, especially for losses, as we did on Saturday night. Now, his hands were all over the ball on Saturday, but can Caleb Ford demand shut down Nathan Epstein in the one-minute drill? Let's find out next on the Old Dominion Football Show. We're back with the Old Dominion football show and the one minute drill. Caleb Ford DeMet, redshirt sophomore defensive back, joins us this week. If you could be a celebrity for a day, who would it be? Uh, Kid Cuddy. Why is that? Uh, he's just different, has a different way about how he sees things and how he carries himself. What's the one profession that you would not want to pursue under any circumstances? Plumbing. Plumbing. Your favorite superpower if you could have one? Probably to read somebody's mind. Like, if you could read everybody's mind, it'd probably be just an easier life for you. Your perfect day off is what? I don't know, either going out to the country and being away from everything or like going out to a beach and just relaxing. Just, just trying to like get away from anything. Any place that you can get away from everything is probably like the best place to be. The first really expensive car you would buy is what? You know, I'll probably get, I'll probably get like a Mustang, or like the best top end Mustang out there or something with four. What's your favorite thing about being a Monarch? Um, the, just the ability to play like D1 ball, and, like, have a D1 culture and be around guys that want to do things and you know, be like you, so being around, that, being around that, it's like the best thing. He's Caleb Ford DeMet. He's a redshirt sophomore defensive back and he joins us this week for the one minute drill. Caleb, why don't you say goodbye to the Monarch Nation? Hey, right, bye Monarch Nation, be good. And Coach Caleb is second in the nation in pass breakups. He had four yeah. against UVA. He's playing really good football, Bruce. We've had him playing the field corner. And, and what we've been allowed to do now because of how well he's been playing is uh, we can tilt our coverage the other way so we can bracket, double some of the other receivers on the field knowing that he's in such good coverage out to the field by himself. I'll tell you what, the defense looking great this year. All right, we'll be right back. Welcome back along with Coach Bobby Wilder and Keon White. Coach, you've never beaten East Carolina before, and their coach, Mike Houston, has this team running. Yeah, we played them twice, Bruce. Uh, back in 2013 was our first ever FBS opponent down at their place a year. They won 10 games in a bowl. And then last year in that controversial finish. No, it wasn't uh, controversial, Coach. You got yeah. robbed. The ref <laughs> made a bad call. They admitted they made a bad call. You should have won. But that's very nice of you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, two really good games, though, Bruce. And this is, I want to point out, this is a series we'd like to extend. We're in talks. Uh, Wood Seelig and I talked yesterday, spoke to their AD about it, trying to extend this. Keep in mind, this is the closest FBS opponent to Old Dominion is two and a half hours away, so hopefully we can keep this series going. But really excited to have them come into our place this year. And ECU was supposed to join Conference USA when you guys did, and then at the last minute went another direction. Yeah, you're right. They were actually the team we thought we'd partner with in Conference USA, and then they got selected for the AAC. But excited to have this game, Bruce. Hope we can keep it going. All right, Keon, coming up this weekend, you face another dual threat of quarterback and Holton Ayers. Uh, that seems to be the trend right now, quarterbacks running and throwing. Uh, what do you feel? How do you feel about that? Uh, like you said, that's, that's the trend. That's all we've played so far. So mm -hmm. I've only played 
three games at, at defensive end, so that's all I know. So, like, you keep mm -hmm. it the same way as you do everything else. All right, mm -hmm. special teams-wise, uh, East Carolina beat you guys with that field goal last season. You mm -hmm. can never underestimate the importance of mm -hmm. special teams. Yeah, we've spent a lot of time on that in practice, Bruce. It's something right now we're doing really well. The, the only area is just a couple placement on kickoffs. Punt team's been excellent. We're punting the ball well, kicking field goals. You know, Keon had a huge block field goal in the game against Virginia. So this is an area our players take a lot of pride in. It'll be absolutely critical Saturday we perform well. All right, Conference USA Defensive Player of the Week this week, and he was the class president in high school. That's why he does so well here on the show. Coach, <laughs> right. finally tonight as we wrap it up, any instructions for the fans Saturday? Yeah, we, we need our fans again. They showed up in game one. Our students, Bruce, a shout out to our students. We could have as many as 5,000 students at this game and need them really loud when we're on defense Saturday night. All right, that's it. We'll see you next week on Wednesday night on the Old Dominion Football Show. Good night, everybody. Have a great night. Oh, good night.